In every sacristy, there's a copy of a small book like this one called the Ordo, the Order of Prayer in the Liturgy of the Hours in Celebration of the Eucharist. It's a guide for clergy for which prayers and readings to use. And with each season of the church year, the Ordo gives special instructions for that liturgical season. For Lent, the Ordo quotes the ceremonial of bishops. The annual observance of Lent is a special season to ascent the holy mountain of Easter. Through its twofold theme of repentance and baptism, the season of Lent disposes both catechumens and the faithful to celebrate the Paschal mystery. Catechumens are led to the sacraments of initiation by means of the rite of election, which takes place here at the cathedral this afternoon, the scrutinies and catechesis. The faithful, listening more intently to the word of God and devoting themselves to prayer, are prepared through a spirit of repentance to renew our baptismal promises. Lent is the special season for the ascent to the holy mountain of Easter. Every time I read this instruction, I'm reminded of a story about a mountain climber, a climber who set as a goal for his life to climb the highest mountain. After many years of preparation and training, he began his adventure all by himself because he didn't want to share the glory with anyone else. He wanted the glory all for himself. Now the man's first couple of days of climbing were quite successful as he made good progress. However, as his adventure continued and one of the days drew to a close, the night felt heavy in the heights of the mountain and the climber could see nothing. All was dark, where the moon and the stars were covered with thick clouds. The man knew better than to continue climbing in the dark, but he was determined to reach his goal. So he continued climbing, when only a few feet from the top of the mountain, he slipped and fell in the air, falling at what seemed to be great speed, as he fell in the air, the climber could only see black spots and feel the terrible sensation of gravity sucking him down. As he kept falling, he felt great fear. All the good and bad things of his life passed through his mind. As he was thinking about how close to death he was getting, all of a sudden he felt the rope that was tied around his waist pull him very hard. His body was suspended in the air in complete darkness. Only the rope was holding him. In that moment of stillness and fear, he had no choice but to scream, God, help me. All of a sudden, a deep voice in the darkness answered, What do you want me to do? Save me, God, shouted the mountain climber. After a moment of silence, God responded, Do you think I can really save you? Of course I believe you can, shouted the climber. The climber anxiously waited for God's response. After a period of silence that seemed like eternity, the climber heard God say, Then cut the rope. There was silence. As the climber hung there suspended in the darkness, he contemplated God's response, cut the rope. But despite God's response, the climber decided his best chance for survival was to hold on to the rope with all his strength and wait to be rescued. The rescue team found the climber frozen and dead, his body suspended in the air with a rope tied around his waist his hands clenched to it, hanging on for life. The rescue team found the dead man suspended in the air, only 10 feet above the ground. Is this story indicative of our annual ascent 
of the holy mountain of Easter? Is there something in our lives that we are hanging on to? Something we are just not willing to give up that is blocking our relationship with God. Lent is a time of preparation, a time of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving so that we might prepare ourselves for the celebration of the Paschal mystery, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, a time of continuing catechesis for those adults who are preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil, a time in which we as the faithful are more attentive to the word of God, to prayer, to penance, as we prepare to renew our baptismal promises. You may have noticed that prayer guides us in our Lenten journey. Prayer guides us to fasting and almsgiving. Prayer guides us to repentance, because in prayer, we call out to God. He responds, and hopefully, hopefully, we listen to him and follow his advice. In our readings today, we heard of Noah and those with him surviving the great flood. We heard of Jesus being tempted in the desert by Satan, but not falling to Satan's temptations. Noah survived the flood because he listened to God and did what God called him to do. Jesus did not fall to the temptations of Satan because his focus was and is on the will of the Father. At every Mass, we pray the Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do we mean it? In our Lenten journey, Think about how you decided to give up what you have given up for Lent. Or maybe better said, what you have given for Lent. Was your decision a result of listening to God in prayer for what he would like you to give up for your greatest benefit? Over the past few years, I've been a spiritual mentor for the Men's Exodus 90 groups. And through this experience, the one thing I've consistently noticed that's the most difficult practice for most men is to find time for prayer. And yet, prayer, taking time to listen to God, is a foundation for any growth in the spiritual life, in our life of faith. One of my favorite prayers is from the Liturgy of the Hours on Thursday after Ash Wednesday, just three days ago. Lord, may everything we do begin with your inspiration, continue with your help, and reach perfection under your guidance. As we continue on our Lenten journey, I invite each of us to ask ourselves what I can give up so I have more time to give to God in prayer, maybe to listen to him in adoration, in the stations of the cross, maybe by reading and praying with the readings for daily mass, in praying the liturgy of the hours, or in praying the rosary, or by participating in the consecration to St. Joseph, or perhaps just in quiet time at home in prayer, whatever God is calling you to do to listen for what God is calling each of us to let go of in our lives so we can grow closer to him and allow his love to shine in us and through us. As we continue on our Lenten journey, on the ascent to the holy mountain of Easter, may all we do begin with God's inspiration, continue with his help, and reach perfection under his guidance.